now let's talk about the application execution but before getting started with application execution first of all let's understand about the ram memory again ram stands for random access memory when we execute an application the application initially gets loaded into the ram memory then cpu fetch it from the ram memory and then executes the instruction right now inside the ram memory we have different segments or you can say different spaces and let's discuss all about those spaces first the first space is the stack the second space is the heap the third one is the kernel the fourth one is os reserved you can see the data part data the fifth one is the text right there are the few common segments or you can say the spaces available in the ram memory when we execute an application application take advantage of all these segments excluding this kernel one which is handled by the os itself so let's just remove it and these are the four segments or four spaces of ram memory which are utilized by the application to function properly right out of these four we are only focused on this stack part so let's go with the definition first stack is just an arrangement of items or processes on top of one another very simple when you place an item on top of the another item it's just a simple stack like you have a stack of books right you have a stack of applications you have a stack of processes where one process is on top of another process which is usually called as a stack if we give a simple diagram for the stack let's say this is how our stack will look like this is an empty container and let's say this is our first process then we got our second process then we got our third process and so on if you want to name them you can name it as process 1 then process 2 and so on up to your process n and the size of the stack is again denoted or you can say calculated on the basis of the size of your ram memory now one thing to keep in mind each process has their own stack as well for example if i'm saying if i'm saying this is my application stack or you can say this is your system stack inside your system stack you will see another process stack and you will see second process stack then you will see third process stack as well right so each process has their own stack so they can execute independently for that they manage their own stack and this is done by the kernel itself right now one more thing inside this application stack we have function stacks as well like we have application stack this one right consider it as application stack now inside application stack as well we have these function stacks right suppose this is my function one stack right same we will get for the second function same we will get for the third function and so on it means every function has their own stack as well right so each application has their own stack each function has their own stack and these stacks are handled or you can say the data is processed within this stack with the help of different registers and these registers are handled by the cpu itself but these registers are only used to store memory address which lies somewhere in this stack so here we have three important registers to work with the first one is the base pointer 
the second one is the stack pointer and the third one is the instruction pointer these are the three different pointers that our cpu utilize to work with these stacks base pointer stores the highest address of a stack right of stack frame specifically if we go with now inside ram we have different stack for different processes inside the process we have different stack for different functions and different function stacks are called as stack frames it means if we have another stack within a stack it would be referred as stack frame like for example for this ram memory we have different stack for this process 1 process 2 process 3 right so this the stack for every process will also be referred as a stack frame simple so the highest address of the stack frame would be stored inside this base pointer only the address of the highest stack frame right then we got the stack pointer stack pointer stores the lower you can say the lowest address of stack frame then we got the instruction pointer which stores the instruction to execute you can say the address of the instruction simple but they always stores the address they don't store the values these registers base pointer we usually call it as bp if we are using 32-bit architecture and for 64 we call it ebp which is extended base pointer right the same goes for this stack pointer we call it sp and for 64-bit architecture we call it esp same goes for instruction as well we call them ip and eip respectively simple now one more thing to store the addresses they always take some storage space within the ram memory and the storage space also depends on the architecture that you are using if you are using 32 bit architecture it will take 4 bytes to store the address if you are using 64 bit architecture it will take 8 bytes to store the address right now now let's take example of an application stack but before that let's take an example of a simple application code suppose this is my c program code which has the main function and inside the main we have a variable called buffer main which is of type character now this main function will call the function a inside function a we again have two different variables of type integer and character which again call the function b and then function b has its own variables so now let's draw the stack frame of an application simple for that part if you want you can keep the opening of the stack on the upper side or if you want to represent it on the lower side you can do it as well but the process of adding data into the stack and taking data out of the stack will remain the same we always put the data on top of stack and we always take the data from the top of the stack as well so the topmost entry within the stack is always be executed first right which is done with help of the pop command to date to take any entry out of the stack we use the pop to add any entry within the stack we use push these are the two operations of a stack push we use to add data into the stack we use pop to take data out of the stack simple now let me just highlight these addresses as well here so here we have the higher address and here we have the lower address 
for both. This is the highest address location here. And for lower one, these are the locations. I may have to keep it down. This location is the lowest one in both the examples. Now, one thing which we can identify through this diagram is that the stack always grow from higher to lower addresses. It means stack will always start from the higher address and as long as you add data into the stack, you are moving towards the lower addresses. Right. Now let's take an example of this application of the C language application that we have here and let's draw a stack frame for that. 